Welcome to the Council Workshop for December 17th. This will be our annual 2015 goal setting. And um, what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and punt this off to Tom to talk about a little bit, and then I'm going to have it come back to me, and we'll talk a little bit about this process and how it works. Terrific. Um, well, first, I want to congratulate you for being so organized and orderly. Literally, we're almost a month ahead of the normal schedule, so thank you for another 30 days to get done what we're going to talk about tonight, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it really is an old scheme of things. Often this whole month is lost in terms of making mm -hmm. progress, so I really uh, applaud you for being uh, committed to getting together as soon as you can. Um, so I've been asked to help facilitate a process uh, for you tonight. I've prescribed or suggested a process that I've used somewhat successfully in the past, and it's quite simple. We've asked you all to give some thought to and hopefully be prepared with a handful of goals. And the process is fairly simple. Uh, we'll go around the room, and the, the point of all this is certainly to generate a master list of ideas. I think we'll find, as we certainly suggest, that you'll find there's a lot of commonality. And I strongly encourage you to kind of, uh, you know, friendly amendments, I'll call them, to kind of uh, expand upon and, and those sorts of things. So um, I think you'll see as you go on, uh, that sort of thing happens quite often, a lot of heads nod. And I, I would encourage this to be kind of an open and collaborative process. I know often when the council gets together with the dean of the body, it's very formal and regimented. This really, I would encourage you to be kind of free-flowing and, and it's intended to be a, a conversation at the end of which uh, we go from kind of the individual ideas and boil them down to some consensus items that the council can kind of focus on in the next 12 months. So with that, I'll turn it back to the chair and if you want to kind of work us through that process. I will also mention one other thing at the end. Once we have the master list, and there's no limit, I think I've got on paper, so if we fill a piece of sheet, I'll stick it up on the wall behind us so we can all see it as you progress. And by the at the time that we feel like we've kind of exhausted the new ideas, uh, I have different colored markers, and the exercise will be for all of you to go assign your votes, and you'll have 10 votes. Uh, you could assign those 10 votes to one, <laughs> one goal if you really want to make sure that get some priority, or distribute them among many, of course. And quite simply, we then tally up look at the top vote getters. Typically, it, it ends up around 10. There's no magic set. It's 8, it's 12. Uh, it is what it is. And this year, I offer something new. So to the, extent, <laughs> <laughs> to the extent that one of your individual goals you put up doesn't make the final list, I'm going to give you all a sticker. <laughs> and that sticker is my commitment to you to work with you as an individual counselor to advance that goal. Okay. Uh, because obviously, that's something important to you. Uh, so that's, you know, I, uh, many times I felt at the end of the process, the counselors were a bit disappointed that whatever they thought was important to get forward didn't make the grade. So this is a way to make sure we don't lose that. So Jessica, please. Okay. Uh, so, well, just one quick thing is actually last year um, we all kind of pulled together and decided to kind of walk away at the end from the vote of priority, if you will, because there was such a condensed short list and everyone pretty much agreed that they were all worthy goals, um, that we kind of just embraced the whole list. So, you know, there's always that option, too. So I <laughs> um, just wanted to put that out there. Um, so what I thought we would do is um, we all have our ideas about budget, and we all know that we have a, a new process that, that we're looking for this year. And there's a lot more, um, I think, great partnerships work, working with the town and the finance committees between the school departments and stuff. Um, I will say that um, I am hopeful that we will have a, you know, a discussion on budget, but that we do try to keep it to somewhere about 15 minutes, and that uh, we try to, you know, limit ourselves. Of we know the budget's there, we know we have finance committees. Let's let's pick our actual goals and, and strategies for that budget and then spend, you know, because more than just the budget happens in the community, so we spend time adequately on, on other topics. Um, so to open up for budget, you said, will be the first item, and then um, we'll go around from here. What I did is I wrote down some kind of um, what, what I thought to me were probably likely things that we would all shake our heads and say yes to. Um, so for, for budget and under goals, um, I would say maintain essential services. Uh, 
Um, I think that's one that we can all wrap our head around and probably agree to. Mm -hmm. um, I would say maintain staff and avoid layoffs. That's generally something that we, we feel is important. Um, I'm waiting for Go ahead. Tom to write. <laughs> Um, another goal that I, I think would be important this year is to redevelop our staffing and hiring plan. Um, we have had to kind of backtrack and, and push aside those plans. I, I think it would be important um, not only for the department but for, for Tom and as well as finance to, to have a good understanding of all right, well, these needs don't go away. How, how are we going to you know, address those? Um, so redevelop our staffing plan and then, um, of course, work on and maintain strong relationship with our legislative representation. Um, we did make some great moves with that last year. Um, we were actually able to facilitate a meeting here and, and have it as a workshop. I think that was a useful tool that we should do again this year is to maintain that relationship and um, Steve Marie with some of her work with, you know, with MMA and, and Tom are, are working on, on bringing that in again for this year. Um, so again, just maintain a strong relationship with our legislative representation. And then I have two which are mine personally. Um, they don't okay. Just good. Yeah. That maintaining the relationship, was that intended to be budget related or an overall? It, it would be budget related. Um, that that would, to me would be a process that we would want to do prior to budget. Um, to talk to us a little bit about some of you know the bills and whatnot that are floating around up there that may have an impact to us to be aware Excuse of. Me, these three are, are clearly budget related. That other ones might have. Uh, that one's broader, 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 and that's got some broader implications. Yeah. Communication, which is fine. Would it be acceptable if I kind of tagged that as a separate plot and yeah. we flush that out? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Budget could be a component. Yep. Mm -hmm. So uh, I see what you're trying to say. You say maintain legislative relationship. Yes. And maintain and strengthen. Not to speak for you. <laughs> I had to read it. I, I'm <laughs> certain I wonder if I need glasses. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> uh, and then I have uh, one, one more. Um, I'm sorry, I have two more. And these are certainly um, just my personal thoughts c coming into um, another budget season and just things that I've seen along the way. Um, I, I think it would be important for us with the budget process to have a very clear understanding and to have um, to define and distinguish department revenue requests. So what that would mean is to I think I way I'm trying to find my where I wrote it. <laughs> so the, the really what I'm looking for in that is two two figures. Um, when I say define and distinguish the revenue requests for departments. Uh, what is the level of service to maintain the staffing and the cost drivers? And then a breakout and a distinction between that and what is new expenditure and new initiatives or new services. Um, I, I think it would be appropriate to understand and have a good, solid working knowledge rather than you know, sometimes as these go along and, and we come to the 11th hour as a council with a second reading on a budget, numbers just start flying out of the, out of the woodwork and, and they don't have tangible, this is what the effect of that is. So I think it's better to have a strong understanding of if, if we did want to support, say, you know, changing something at that hour, what's that mean? That means we're either digging into level services or we're digging into new initiatives. So I think that's an important number for us to, to understand. Mm -hmm. Is that an independent thought, or is that something? I think it's an extension of essential services. So I hear cost drivers, new initiatives. Mm -hmm. I know that was a big conversation piece in the joint meeting. Well, isn't it essential services a subset of what you said, isn't it, Jessica? I, I understand, is that yeah. Yeah, yeah th that we want to maintain essential services, okay. but I want a clear breakout of what funding is essential services and what funding and what initiatives 
are outside of essential services. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So, uh, forgive me, is it budget related? Something that I can put it here? So you yeah. really want to identify, yeah. it, uh, identify essential services and the, their costs? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I thought she was saying that uh, she believes essential services need to be maintained as a part of our budget process. Mm -hmm. But in the budget yeah. process itself, we should be looking at what are the costs associated with essential services and what are the costs associated with expanded new well, initiatives. What the, new actual, initiatives. what the actual mm -hmm. impact is going to be if mm -hmm. we have to cut something instead yeah. of just so, yeah. instead of just seeing numbers, what does that actually mean? Well, what, what happens if this happens? So maybe it's you know, to, to my point of, it's a lot easier to say we're not moving forward with this initiative this right. year. Right. So, you know, we're, we're going to, you know, but that was my point, to have a clear understanding of what's new and what's, what's maintaining and what, that co what the costs are between those two lines. So, so it'll be budget related? Or yeah. Okay. So, and that was to really to um, identify costs of the essential services? Trying to get it down to four four words. Here. <laughs> four words. Um, Just enough detail that everyone knows what the thought is. My point here. We can expand upon it and the goals themselves. About cost drivers. Delineate between level service and new initiative. Yeah. And then I have one more, and we'll go ahead and start kind of punting things around the room a little bit for the budget conversation. Um, I, I know we all have a separate idea of, let, let's be honest, the money. And we, we all have an idea in our head of where we want to be and where we don't want to be or how much less we'd like to be or, you know, everybody has their own idea of this. Um, I, I am hopeful that we don't back ourselves so far into a corner of, of having a set target number goal that we uh, can't possibly come out from because we don't have a magic ball of what the state's going to do. Right. We could lose four million and, and you can't maintain level services at a four million dollar revenue loss and you're already lo losing that, even with and then having an increase. So I, I think, though, it is healthy to have, if you will, the gray area of, of what we know we might be willing to, to kind of have some wiggle room around. So I, I'm not going to say a number, personally. I'm not going to say I want 20% less. So I don't, I'm not going to say I want 2%. I'm not going to say... Any, any one of those numbers to you, but what I will say my, myself as my personal thought on budget is the overall tax dollar impact for the average household. When we sit back and we look when the, everything's done is we look at those impact values and we say the average house is 300000 and this is what we think that that dollar impact is going to look like to that average household. Some will be a little less, some will be a little more, but, but this, is, this is what it looks like. So for me, my, my thought is an overall tax dollar impact for the average household should be mindful and respectful and not meet or exceed the, uh, the, or consume the majority of CPI for fixed income residents. So there's some numbers there that are given to, you know, already out there that, that we know. You know, we know what Social Security is going to have this year. We know what Veteran Benefits is going to do. You know, those numbers are, are released and, and already floating around out there. I'm saying I, I, I have some gray area for that. I do, but it can't meet or exceed what, what that well, is. Sure you don't dominate all the conversation. And nope, and that was my, my last thought. Get the idea up and then you guys can get around. So what I heard was limit tax rate increase in CPI. 
No, no, not the tax rate increase. <laughs> That's I, I, mine. That's <laughs> 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 the dollar, dollar impact. To the, uh, to the CPI <laughs> adjustment that would occur to a typical Social Security recipient. Yeah. But you have to. That was my Even I have to research that one. But it's probably, you know, twenty thousand dollars is what a typical recipient would receive, and it's one point seven percent is what the CPI adjustment was for this year. Less than twenty, I can tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> like twelve. Yeah, you know, but, but we're talking about household income. Yeah. No, no, right. So that that makes it a difference. Right. And and I see this as I hate to get ourselves boxed into any particular number or whatever at this point tonight. Mm -hmm. um, I see this as we should be putting out here what we see as visions or goals. And Peter and I had this discussion today. What our visions and goals are for the town, both for us as a council working and then for the town being cognizant of the fact that there are going to be some real fiscal restraints uh, on our ability to do things. Um, so f working from there. So that's why I'm ha very happy we're working a month earlier mm -hmm. on this because it does give us some time mm -hmm. to then look at the whole picture. Can you tell me a big picture person? Mm -hmm. You know, we start with the big picture and then look at how that's going to work for finance and what's the impact going to be on mill rate from the from the information that we know? My, my, my point with putting this up there, like I said, was I, I think it's important that we all know there's a gray area somewhere. Yeah. You know, it, it's also, to me, coming into this process, um, it is impossible, and, and, I'm, I, and I guess I'm going to go on that limb and say that, it is impossible for the municipal departments to come in flat again. It, it just is almost completely impossible. Mm -hmm. So we, we've held budgets for five years. Right. So with us being flat, and of course the schools have needs, just those needs have already put us X, Y, and Z over the last five years. Mm -hmm. and it gets um, and so I'm trying to be realistic and say I know that we cannot avoid an increase of some level. My, my point is how we get to that I will leave to, to, the, to the finance committee to try to figure out is that we need to work, you know, we do get, revenues are kind of interesting, you know, mm -hmm. revenues you get from your tax base and the growth that you see every year. Um, revenues come from the fees for the services we provide. Maybe we need to revisit those. Maybe we need to look for new ones. Um, you know, there, there are more ways to come to a number than, you know, the, it, it's, a, it's a larger dynamic of how, how you get there. Um, I personally is saying, do whatever you need to do as a finance committee. As far as an overall, this is where I am on the overall, though. So that that's. It, and I guess where I am in responding to that is, if the goal that you stated was that for the average household that it won't consume the majority of the CPI adjustment, we already know that's a tough bill. So when you box, and, and I'm concerned about essential services can mean a lot of things to different people. Everybody will argue Absolutely. services are essential. So I, I think I'm a little uncomfortable saying we will maintain essential services, we will avoid any type of staffing changes. I think that just, that takes options off the table. You don't have to say we will, but I, I'm really uncomfortable right out of the chute saying we're committed that those two things are off the table to deliver. That takes some of the options away of delivering the number that you have in mind you want to get to. So I, I mean, maybe, I mean, we, as a stated goal, these are things we're saying we're going to achieve. Yeah. So I just uh, get uncomfortable saying right out of the shoe, these are things that are completely off the table that we're not going to look at. Cause I, you, I think I'm sorry. Do you think we should have a definition of what essential services are? I, or how would you define that? I'm asking this to Peter because yeah. he's... Well, I think that's I'm, how I'm hearing your, your question. Well, here's, here's, here's my problem. I mean, and 
we serve our constituents, right. and I think all of us have heard from our constituents that they are worried about the taxes and what they're paying and what they're getting for value. So my suggestion was something like on goals, saying we recognize financial constraints. That, mm -hmm. that at least gives a nod to taxpayers saying we hear you. Right. We talk about we want to maximize the value of the dollars that we're spending. So what do we do for the resources the community has given us to drive the most value to the community? We're going to have to have trade-off conversations. I think mm -hmm. we're going to have to, and what we used to always do in business is have those conversations. What do you want to do more of? And by definition, sometimes that means you have to do less of something else. Mm -hmm. But it reframes the conversation saying we're open. But I think when you start lopping off major, I mean, in, in both sides of the equation, staff is a big part of the total budget for the town. Right. I, I so do just want to point out that <clears throat> you know, essential services and staff for the municipality is policemen and firemen and all the things that we don't have enough of now. <laughs> so right, but I, I just want to, you know, that out to you these are great, you know, let's face it, these are great terms to kind of throw around, but what do they mean? Well, that's exactly what they mean. Well, but, you know, but, but, you're, but, you're avoiding laying off, you know, we've already lost by attrition, I think, all we could realistically lose in certain departments. Mm -hmm. We're already not responding appropriately to public safety calls. Um, you know, somebody's got to plow the road. I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I'm open to anybody else's opinion, but, but certainly, uh, let's, um, yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go around the table. We'll go ahead and start with Peter, and then we'll go round the table for um, budget, and then wrap up and, yeah. I think well, I'm done. I mean, I kind of, I kind of had the bullet that I had. Recognize. Yeah, I, I mean, you, you mentioned a couple of great things, and I, I'm yeah. recognize. Them. Recognize just a little concerns. Yeah, which kind of then is a nod to the taxpayers saying we hear you. I'm just going to put this. This, hmm. this is budget. We're just going to put this down here. So. And really, and really adopt this conversation. Of we want to maximize the value of the resources we do have, whatever mm -hmm. that means. And we're going to have to have trade-off conversations. So I think, you know, as we had talked today, taxpayers may be willing to pay more if they clearly know what that investment is. Right. So that is a trade-off conversation, saying if you want to have X, Y, and Z, right. this is what it means. Are you willing to do that? So, right. And really the conversation about we need to somehow reframe it that there things aren't off the table. If we want to do more things, are there some things we can do less of? I just think that's a general business practice that worked really well for every business I've been in. And again, on essential services, some people might describe trash pickup as essential services. So I think for our constituency, no, but I mean it's true. The words no, to our also, constituency. No, absolutely. Something. That's why I was asking about how we how do we define that. I hope they define that. It really is a right. community value driven. What, what's right. important. Peter, can I add something? This is actually part of mine and it's perfect with this. I agree with everything that you said, and it should end, the end of that sentence should be that produces a reasonable and responsible budget. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Good. Great. Except how you define reasonable and responsible. I mean, <laughs> you've been down that road no forever. Than, you know, no different right. than essential. I know. I know. Develop a reasonable and right. responsible budget, and then these thoughts flow. Oh, believe me, that's going to be argued, too. <laughs> but that will be argued, too. What's reasonable and responsible? Okay. All right. So, Peter, did you have anything else? Not in the budget, no. Okay. Bill? Uh, a lot of what uh, has been said I would just agree with, and so uh, to keep it brief, I'll, I'll <coughs> uh, limit my, my comments. I think when you look at uh, uh, each budget cycle, you ask yourself, where are we? <coughs> are we desperate and we need to actually cut services and cut personnel? Uh, and I think in 2010, we were there, and we did. Uh, uh, we now have a recovery going on, but that recovery really has been more of a business corporate right. recovery than a, a worker employee wage recovery. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. And so that's why I think you see people feeling like, right. wait a sec, fiscal restraint as opposed to responsibility is really the word of the day. I'm not going to put a number on this because we only control the cost side and we can't predict what, what revenue. revenue we're going to get. So uh, I'm content to say we are in a period of fiscal restraint 
uh, I interpret that as one where I desire not to uh, try to make wholesale cuts or adjustments. It's more of a level services budget, but I completely agree that there are trade-offs, just as the school department last year did not get what they wanted, but they made trade-offs as to how they spent the money. And we, in turn, will have those decisions and help that dialogue will happen within the, within the Finance Committee and hopefully this year very much engage the whole town council so uh, this we get a good sense coming into uh, when the budget gets actually mm -hmm. up to the town council. I don't think, I, I'm, I, don't have, I actually don't have anything to add. I'm okay. Not at, at least as far as budget for at this point. I like all that stuff up there, but I still like the fact of uh, having a number up there. I don't, I don't want to see tax increases any more than the CPI. And let, let me put something, let me put a comma there and say, <laughs> assuming uh, the, relative, the same relative revenue stream from the state. Mm -hmm. um, we've heard over the past several years from the taxpayers that it's too much. Mm -hmm. uh, last year we came in at 2.2 percent, which is still above the CPI. I think a lot of people were happy to see that but I think they also see that, that hopefully that that's a trend. And I think that we owe it to them to continue that trend of low increases. Budget predictability, I think is, that's what you're talking about. I think that people want not to see up and down, right. up and down, or, or more, more to the point, uh, tax rate stability. So right. Stable tax rate. Yeah. Stable, tax rate. Stable tax rate. Is that that's what I am. Mean. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see stability of the property tax rate. Good one. <coughs> um, you covered a, a big part of it with the reasonable and responsible yeah. budget response. Some of this is more, for my stuff, it's a little bit more technical, I guess. I mean, I'd just simply like to see us expand our budgeting process so that it's a three to five year process and not just a one year outlook. Yep. Um, and that includes capital projects, facility projects um, that, in, that combine both schools and towns so that we have a clear picture. And, and we have to go through an education process with that so that when people read those financial statements, they realize that it's simply a picture at this point in time and it can change and it will change. Um, and not to overreact to that, but it takes a, at some point we have to introduce it, and it needs to be it needs to show out a three-year outlook at least. Yeah, that capital budgeting and that longer yeah, longer uh, view was part of the joint discussion. Right. I think, uh, yeah. That long I had that for more in the concept of long-range planning, yeah. both for facilities and the municipal campus. Well, and it, it encapsulates a lot of what um, Council Holbrook said, you know, about the hiring. Um, I'm trying to remember where it was up there. The hiring plan, uh, the redevelopment and the staffing plans, because when you do that type of budgeting outlook, you can then, you know, try to plan and identify those major changes in the cycle so that you know that you're at least addressing it at some point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thought that point. So everything budget related, it strikes me that there's nothing in direct conflict with each other. I think that they can all kind of coexist. Mm -hmm. huh. I think Ed wasn't done. One. Oh, I beg your well, I've got like my point of apology. But uh, I think that this is beyond the budget. Uh, it's, I think we have to increase our non-real estate tax revenues. But that, that's outside the budget. That's, that's well, a that's separate, this, I know. That's we a do separate thing. Way. That's, that's, that's an budget. analysis yeah. that we have to do. Well, it's part yeah. of your budget approval process, your schedule of fees. So yeah. that's, that's the time to be talking about um, non-property tax sources. And I had we, we need to do a revamp of our property values, which is somewhat related uh, because, you know, if the value of your overall value of valuation goes up, that affects no rate, it affects whatever. Change the page. Um, I, I would almost maybe let that good. one out yeah, just I because I think no, you'll no, find that's a... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, overall it is, but it can... It, your it whole does. overall value can go up. Yeah. Right but then the mill rate goes down if you're right. trying to raise the same right. Yeah. right. 
Yeah. Right, if you don't increase your dollars, yeah, your mill rate goes down. Absolutely. So I just preserve the thought of this, this non-property tax revenue, so we don't lose that thought. And perhaps the rebound is uh, an important and independent issue that can be yeah. um, captured. Yeah. Totally uh, agree. Have we worked for We've worked for, yeah. Yeah. yeah, in my thought of 15 minutes is half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> But we'll, we'll, get get we'll get there. We'll get there. It is a pretty important topic. topic. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I think at what this point um, we'll do is we'll go ahead and start on the other side of the table with Jean Marie and just kind of work through um, the other side of goals. Um, so okay. we're go ahead and start, Jean Marie. Oh, well, I sent mine out in an email because um, my overall goal, the overarching one, which we already remarked on, so you don't have to write this to him. So stabilizing the property tax rate, and then I had through the continued development of a diverse tax base, really working on you know businesses, bringing businesses to town, and actually diversifying a tax base. Another piece of that, as Ed said, is is your fees. You know, are, are we going to have fees for things, or you know? So anyway, uh, increase. I want to put down what you Oh yeah, okay, go ahead, put that down. That was my number three on the line. And the other notion was uh, diversified tax base? Yeah, continue the development of our diverse tax base. We've got a fairly diverse tax base compared to so a lot of our neighboring. Like that yeah, yeah. Focus. Right. Does that sound independent enough that we should throw it up there? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I'm going to put it under the Title Economic Development. I know Karen Martin had some input. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Something like yeah, and, and that would fall. Yeah. yeah, that would be. Yeah, she had a couple of good ideas. <coughs> yeah, which actually. I actually was able under to follow, I, I followed up with her today. Did you? From because you sent that, which was oh, good. really valuable information. So mm -hmm. thank you. Seems to me, if and she says these are the initiatives that she thinks would advance sure. our ability to participate with yeah. her efforts. Absolutely. Were reflected in her comments, right. and, and I that think great. One of those was business visitation. Business, business visitation. Business, business, yeah. There was I my my thing to her was I was surprised when I read through it. It seemed like a couple of no-brainer things, like why am I not doing this? Right. And I was so glad to see it brought forward right. so that I could say, then reach back out to her and say, just, you know, sorry, well, sorry, Jean Marie. No, 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 no. She's doing this, but she'd love to have. Well, yeah, and that's what I said. I told her I'd go anytime she wants. And yeah. Never even crossed my mind that we right. should be doing that stuff. Was there another thought she had? I know there's one, but I can't recall. Yeah, she had a list of. She, she actually thought had that a list. we ought to have something of a. She said it. Uh, would, Scorecard would be oh, right, a somewhat year. pejorative term, we'll but here, here it's really just intended to be all the, the facts associated with our community right. Right. Uh, so that businesses could understand right. what are the demographics of our community. Right. Uh, they did one this past year recently because I've got it stuck on my bulletin board in front of my a, computer. It was a natural fit yeah. with... Uh, Dan Bacon and the planning right. people who would love that kind of information. Right. Yeah. I would suggest we call it benchmarking. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There could be financial benchmarking, yeah. there could be demographic, and the right. other yeah. number of. That would be cool. When you reference benchmarking, are you talking about benchmarking the environment in which we encourage economic development? Um, and does that include ordinance um, evaluation, policy evaluation? Uh, benchmarking can take shape in many no different problem. forms. Uh, you know, we're already engaged in a financial benchmarking exercise. Sure. I think mm -hmm. what Karen's talking about is benchmarking us uh, in terms of demographics, mm -hmm. socioeconomics, mm -hmm. really understanding Just who we are. Okay. Those sorts yeah. of things over time can help From business inform, yeah. inform policy decisions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From a business owner's point of view. No. I mean, one of the things that I'd like to see the town do is to take its ordinances, its policies, its fee structures around business development um, and determine, um, are they working? Um, are they reasonable? And if they're not, then how do we change those to encourage more economic development? Yeah. That's an, uh, an ongoing theme. <laughs> you guys are all taking on my side. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, though. It's all on the same page. You're killing me. The folly of them. The committee that actually plans and workshops. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, 
it, I think maybe just, just so, because I think we might all have this multiply, the, the economic development and ideas yeah. about right. how to get there. Right. Let's right. do kind of a real quick round robin if you have something for yeah, economic development. Uh, did you have anything else for economic development? No, no my only other one was uh, the legislative piece, well, which we can that. For economic development or, or you know, um, is there anything that you had, you'd like to add to that, Sean? Um, as long, I mean, the ordinance and policy, but it's also about policies and fees and, you know, are fees reasonable in comparison to our competitors, whether it's South Portland, Falmouth, whoever it might be. It's, it's a full checklist of where are we and are they even working. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm good. Ed, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? No. Okay. Pretty much covers everything, I think. Okay. Um, not, I guess not so much towards that, just more of, I get more of work, trying to work with Karen more, mm -hmm. um, you know, utilizing her um, and her resources more, uh, her knowledge. So would that be support that go? Yeah, so I, I just feel like that it's so, so untapped at this point, her knowledge, is, or at least, at least from my perspective, from, from me as a counselor, I have not tapped into, into her um, knowledge and expertise as much as I should have in the last year, and that's something I definitely want to work towards being better at. But I'll skip know. me and come back. Yeah, yeah. And I, I thought that that point's a good point because uh, while a lot of times we have reports at the end of the evening, I think we don't hear from her. Uh, no, right. we, should, we should be getting maybe two, three times a year a SEDCO, even if it's just 15 minutes, Bang, we we get it, and and the two th I saw referenced in some of the things that she had sent the 2011 uh, vision report, mm -hmm. which relates to an effort, concentrated effort at, at saying where should we be going, and I thought maybe that could be redistributed to the council members sure. so we could all just do it, read it. It's it's like that. We all felt like well, we're learning something when we heard her remarks and Dan Bacon's remarks. Yeah. There were thoughts we didn't have. Yeah. yeah. I guess mine would only be sort of a subset of something someone else said, sort of having a five-year comprehensive mm -hmm. plan where we want the town to be both mm -hmm. business, residential. Okay. To me, it's all part of that, the kind of what we want the mix to be. So okay. it's really more of a comprehensive sort of planning mm -hmm. as a goal. So we know, and I, I, and I think it ties to what you said, Sean, about yeah the things we want to build and the things that are upcoming and mm. what do we want the vision to be and I think we need to involve people in that other than ourselves too. So I'm going to chime in. I had a couple for this um, that might be slightly different. Um, one of the things that Karen did that I thought was extremely useful was um, put together an all committees meeting mm -hmm. and I think that's an excellent, excellent excellent idea and I think that should be done maybe quarterly. I agree. Um, that's a great opportunity. So many things are interconnected whether that's by local, that's chamber, that's SEDCO, that's you know, there's so much interconnectivity that and you know she's been a great benefit for you know some of the housing stuff and, and the historic preservation um, has been a great point person. So again I, I think she's kind of a glue that we haven't you know used enough. <laughs> um, Is that so important independent enough to I, I think quarterly. I do. Yeah, yeah, I think so. So we'll call it. Uh, she called it the. Uh, or even by by maybe by yearly. Maybe by, yearly. by yearly. By yearly. Yeah, because yeah. seven. And she was good at it. She ran yeah. it well. Biannual. So that biannual. ties in with the economic yeah. development piece. Biannual, semi-annual. Um, even. The other I thing I had that was slightly different yeah. is I had a few different things. Um, I did have increased business tax. <laughs> um, but I had a, a, a little twist on, on something Sean had said. Um, I'd kind of like to revisit our business zoning and revisit the current allowed uses. Yeah. T totally agree. Um, so what this would kind of mean is where the uses are, where the zoning is, what the zoning performance standards are, the requirements. You know, may, maybe our vision originally when we laid out a lot of these, and, and I'm going to use a current example, is um, Highgate Park allows for no outside storage. Um, that prohibits, say, an auto dealership. Do, do, do we still want to say no, no, none of that no. up there, or right. do we want to revisit? Right. Um, so, to, to, like I said, to Sean's point of 
revisiting all of our ordinances and zoning pertaining to business. So can I ask a question? As he's writing, can I ask a question? Where are we in our comprehensive planning, the, the next stage in comprehensive planning? I think planning? it's about due again. <laughs> that would be a significant part of that comprehensive plan process, I wouldn't it? I need to bring it back down to reality a little bit. I mean, that is such a lofty goal. It's important, and the committee can help you on that. I mean, that is right. I, that, yeah. to make sure we're appreciating the yeah. magnitude of, of that effort. Not to interrupt you, Tom, but speaking from an ordinance side, part of, I mean, you're talking about the business ordinance side, and I'm coming from an ordinance from the town ordinance side, and that's one of my undertakings is to go through all of our ordinances, which would include a, yep. which would include that, and that's it's massive, it's 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 a lot, Certainly. but there's a lot of it in there that hasn't been looked at in a long time. But if I understand the process, is that the comprehensive plan is a vision statement in a way in which ordinances are then the enactment of those visions. Right. And so when I concentrated solely on the ordinances to make sure that the ordinances were written and then effective, effective in what it was intended. So I don't disagree with the comprehensive plan. I just, I was trying to, that's a much bigger issue with the comprehensive so plan. So the original question was, when is the comprehensive plan? Well, they moved it back in 2006. Uh, we completed the implementation. Um, that 10 year is, is I, I wouldn't say it's hard and fast, but we don't have right. to have it done in right. 10 years. Right. In fact, I would suggest that Scarborough's uh, far the most in terms right. of <laughs> modernization oh, yeah. of zoning. Right. Um, you know, it's been a monumental effort in 10 years to, to get to where we're at. For those of you who've been around right. the CPIC committee and now long range planning has been tireless for that entire time. Yeah. Hmm. So, like I said, my, my one little spin was to revisit and rethink what we allow where. Um, I did have one other thing. Um, or I lied. I have a couple things. Mm -hmm. I want us to obtain a, the, the business-friendly community status. Um, Karen will probably know likely what would entail for mm -hmm. that. Uh, <laughs> Um, this is something that has come up often. One, I think it's just a good thing for Scarborough to have as being certified as a business-friendly community. You mean the Level Page business-friendly one? Or? To, yeah, I believe it started in, in with him, okay. correct? Um, or it certainly well, is at least sorry. explore it. Maybe not obtain it, but at uh, least explore it. Um, it has hurt some of our projects. <laughs> um, as you know, as far as... Um, some of the business projects mm -hmm. and, and some of the housing initiatives and historic initiatives, um, we don't receive points in Main State Housing because we are not a certified business community. Mm -hmm. um, and I question how many times we lose out on those things. Is it, I'm sorry, but I don't think those points are particularly go back to that. It's another piece that's got to do with economic development development and and tax base wealth so to speak mm -hmm. anyway it's so that's a whole separate so well my point was explore it at the very yeah. least explore it yeah. if, if we're losing yeah. competitively in projects because we don't have right. that status have, have what, well, what what would it take to, to do that yeah I'm not aware that we've lost anything but I say really understand what failed it, it, the past council this first came out made a conscious decision not to, not to pursue it, yeah. but we certainly can revisit it. Mm -hmm. so, um, I'd like to learn more at least about yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, I'd leave it open. So it's uh, economic development. Explore. We're the fastest growing economic community in Maine right now, are we not? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd like to know. And the most, em the most employers, employees are. Yeah. So I don't know. Just so that I would, I'll, I'd like to know more about it. I don't know. I don't know exactly what yeah. it is, other than... But it's something that we need to get that info. Yeah, yeah it's um, The other thing as far as economic development, um, it was, and, and these are just some thoughts, you don't have to put these on the board, but um, last year we had made a goal of whatever it takes, mm -hmm. and I thought that was outstanding, and, and you know, really, again, staff has been outstanding in doing mm -hmm. that. I just hope we maintain that, that determination, that drive, um, thinking out of the box and even doing outreach sometimes mm -hmm. to try to, uh, you know, attract business. 
Um, so just to kind of applaud staff on that. The other thing I would just like to kind of touch base on is um, we do have a three-ring binder, which is high-speed technology. Um, again, what can you know? Maybe they can kind of keep on that whatever it takes and 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 be looking at you know mm -hmm. trying to attract business. That's a huge asset for Square Bro. Mm -hmm. um, are there is there interest you know with another business to maybe expand upon that? So again, just. You know. Yeah, yeah. Please put that up there because that's something that I sort of started really? conversating with Karen, Tom, um, myself, a couple other people, and we were waiting for after the election <coughs> to. Oh. But I, I definitely want to see it up there. I think it's a priority of this of this um. town to. Hey, we have something with it. It comes yeah. through town. Mm -hmm. Why aren't we using it? That's huge, and it's Absolutely. just sitting right there, untapped potential. Okay. Well, I think it's that. pretty fully explored technology yeah. on a number yeah. of the strategies. Uh, on the benchmarking, is it worth putting up like kind of the demographic component? Yeah. Uh -huh. Karen was getting at the scarf yeah. by the numbers. She loves yeah. to do that yeah. stuff. <laughs> she does. That has been a useful tool several times in um, my work. Having that document, I think that's I think so too. an awesome document. Well, we've done some benchmarking in the past, comparing our town with other towns. Yeah, as we have. far as uh, I think that that's that's one thing that we we should make sure that's done at least every other year, yep. if not every year. Yeah, we are we're in process to do an update for the financial ben benchmarking, and Karen has access to all the census mm -hmm. information. And yeah. It's a matter of kind of sifting through it and coming up with the the things that we think are important. Okay. So, oh, two small items under diversified tax tax base. Mm -hmm. um, if if uh, um, T. Marie doesn't mind, I'd like to add uh, diversify and support the existing tax base because I think there's uh, one is a new initiative to bring in right. other companies. The other one is also about supporting it. And I'll be honest, I'm also looking at the subtext that's between those two lines. And that is, you know, I've always wondered for the 14 years I've been on the council. Um, I'd love to see the town of Scarborough become an incubator for new business mm -hmm. and have an economic development program that could do micro lending um, and you know offer $25,000 loans through its tax base. Um, so if a new company needs new new technology and can respond without having to leave or close, and that's something that can happen. Um, it takes time to develop yeah, that, but I think it's something that I hope that we can look at. Hmm. So business retention and growth. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yeah, no, um, and then just as an example, if you want to do your research on it, um, actually Saco Biddeford has a pretty strong um, economic development uh, loan program that is supported by their tax base that works very, very well. And it actually funds a, a portion of their economic development corporation. Mm -hmm. So something to consider. Yeah. Just and last, I wanted to add, um, it could be, I think that the Higgins Parkway issue needs to be taken out by itself and looked at and determined whether or not um, its structure is appropriate given the constraints that we've had regarding the recession and, and what can we do to develop that area um, individually. That's only was looked at 18 months ago or so. And yeah. Consultation to be looked at again. Yeah. In terms of allowed uses and such. So, right. So uh, HP, I'll put. Sure. Any other uh, different ideas? I just wanted to set this to the time uh, just want to make sure we make sure we get everyone's ideas up there. Um, do, do, uh, well, are we restricting ourselves to? Uh, oh, can the uh, flame? I, 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 I have Tom. I have three. You were done, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Sean, I have three quick items. Yeah. First is, I'm surprised we didn't start off with a lessons learned 2014 assessment of what the goals were for that year. And I hope that if anything, well, I don't want to go backwards in history, is that we set the tone and we set the commitment so that next year we go through whatever list that we come up with and we say this is what we achieved and we want to carry forward what was not accomplished because it sets, the, I think, a great transition in leadership and tone. So I'd like to, so it's about the methodology about how we do this. The second issue I wanted to mention is that I'd like to see a master plan for the town. I guarantee I brought up uh, the capital budget plan, but it's also the facility. You know, we've been talking about, you know, we want to have a new community center here and an ice rink there and a swimming pool there. 
I think that we need to have some conceptualization to that mm -hmm. and understanding so that it can be published and so that we can share it with the town. Understanding that that might be a 10, 15, right. 20 year plan, so, but I think there needs to be a formal recognition of what this plan is. And then the third piece is that I really hope that um, I'd like to see a workshop about um, what I would call innovative changes. Have the same type of workshop where we talk about not just how do we respond to the current needs and how do we, you know, let's, let's talk about um, energy efficiency. How do we convert all of our municipal bu buildings to solar, solar paneling? I mean, whatever it might be, or into a greenhouse. I mean, whatever the new initiative might be, you know, let's have that type of, and then we have an actual process where we can introduce it and that we know that, okay, the first quarter of every year, we're going to introduce a new idea and then it goes through the process so that when it gets to the budget cycle, where we've gone through the vetting process and we're not just throwing things at the budget saying, well, we want to fund something new, okay. let's bring it up. So that's the expectation. Yeah, it sets the expectation, and then we can, you know, and then we can also take things out that we don't, that's not going to work. Innovation workshop. I, I I call it innovative changes workshop. And and so that was the last one for you, Sean. I'm um, outside. Yeah, so outside. Don't, I didn't see what he wrote on the but previous page. He, he got you. you. No, I've checked them off. Oh. See, he got, he had you. he had you. He had the master plan one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, he said it. He's kind of been stripping it off until others might want to no, no. revisit goals or lessons learned. And this notion of master sure. planning, focused on long range facility planning and, and the like. Yeah. I mean, the only other piece I brought up was about the uh, project management methodology. How do we introduce a topic in the time of year that we introduce it so that it fits properly into the cycles, whether it's the committee work or the budget cycle? Any further refinements to these two? Yeah, uh, the uh, uh, re revisiting goals seems to be that uh, we ought to get a report two, three times a year. How are we doing uh, as against our goal set? Uh, rather than, not, I don't disagree with uh, your point, but I think this is broadens it a little bit so that we don't look back at the end of the year and say, how did we do? We actually see how we're doing and then take steps. Well, we ran out of time today. <laughs> we were, we were going to visit that, but we're not going to have time today. So we'll, we'll work on well, we know, can do visiting. a follow-up. You know, I mean, that's kind of the point of the, you know, my hope is we have a standing yeah. workshop. So, you know, th these are, you know, yeah. a, things that we can work through in, in right. a standing workshop. And I apologize. I do have one more. Okay. <laughs> I would like to see a townwide survey of um, townwide survey completed to determine what are the citizens' expectations of needs. I, I mean, there's a lot of communities that will send out a survey and say, you know, prioritize from one to ten, and they're not that difficult to do. They, I mean, there's companies out there that do that. There's some Skyward residents that can do it for us. Um, I think there needs to be a survey of, you know, what do you want in your services? What is the true opinion? And let's see if we get, you know, what we get for responses. <laughs> They should help stuff the goals. Yeah. Um, I, I appreciate, you know, that goal a little bit, but um, it's a slippery soap. I mean. So you won't put a sticker beside it? When I, you I, I, well, you know, because, <laughs> <laughs> you, right, you, you know, oh, all your money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just, it depends on how it's done. And, and oh, I know, I mean, no d disrespect on that. I just. I think the first thing you're ever going to hear out of people is we need to have the best schools, and, and all our focus needs to be there. And 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 somewhere in there has to be, you know, I, I I'm sorry, but we shouldn't I find do it a survey because we're afraid of what they may tell. No, us. no, no, no. So I, I appreciate, it, but I think but you got to have it done correctly. correctly. Or you won't well, that's why you're hiring independent. Right. Um, <laughs> I don't plan on doing it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We we yes, had yes, and and maybe look at the previous <laughs> one we did. We had a satisfaction survey we did at one point, Tom, that I recall. Maybe we could dig that out and look at that too, um, and maybe see. Yeah. And actually, I was going to never satisfied. For goals, yeah. kind of ties into that. But I was looking at yeah. goals for what the town wanted, but goals for us working together. Yeah. And, um, and so what I had done was transparency, accountability, trust, engagement, inclusiveness, stewardship. And the, what I was going to propose a way to do that is to do some type of survey now. So we ask the questions about where we are, do the survey a year from now to see if we've made progress in establishing trust with our constituents. And I think that kind of builds on the survey of 
we need to ask them what they think and what they want. So, so I, I, I so like the concept of using surveys to kind of get more feedback for us. So yours is more an open, it sounds like, excuse me, it sounds like yours is a more open-ended type survey where you're asking for feedback and Sean's, maybe, and, and, and no. correct me if I'm wrong, is more like these are the things we provide at Scarborough rank them on, on well, what they I are? Would re I would rely on a, a, a master survey maker type person to tell us the best survey because I think you can get one. But you've got to tell them what you want, want for results. We have to, we have to do that together. Mm -hmm. The survey is the instrument to right. what right. you're doing. Right. I think there's an important point that Peter started with, which is kind of the open government and transparency piece, which strikes me as important enough to put up here. Right. Everything just might be a way you test. Right. Doing. You could do both. So promote open well, yeah, government. Exactly. <laughs> if you're going to send out a survey yeah. that's promote open government. by a professional and we sign off on it. Right. Uh, um, so you're done? I am. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry that everybody's getting really short changed now. So <laughs> did you have anything? I've got one more. Okay. Go, go ahead. And, and it's in relationship to non-tax revenues, okay. I think we should be working extremely hard this year to somehow get a casino on a referendum in this town. <laughs> uh, oh. yeah. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> woo, woo! All right. It, it's point well taken. This is likely to be coming at us. It will be coming, coming at one way or another. It is right. coming. It will it probably is, be coming. And this council will have to decide whether maybe, it's maybe not. position Oh no, it's coming. It is coming. Oh, okay. So maybe the goal is just to be aware of what just, is yeah. in the works and maybe keep mm -hmm. us apprised yeah. of what's going yeah, on. That well, I think, I mean, certainly. Is it town impact. Is Jean it Marie, wouldn't your and we ought to know what's going on. Come what's that? Would your work with MMA? Keep you informed Absolutely. with the uh, with the casino. I mean, is that really actually? I have an inside track. Well, <laughs> I, <don't laughs> really yeah. I think that Part I mean, not use the word track. Part yeah. of the fun. But, but yeah, and MMA and, well. and yeah. I so mean, well, I'll know in what's coming in for bills yeah. or whatever. We also There's have nothing in the I, hopper I, yet yeah. that I've our, seen. Our law firm has well, a lot of lobbyists yeah. that yeah. are there consistently. Yeah. We'll, we'll just tell them. Put in it. Put a read. We are going to go through the process of putting our stickers up. We agree with it. I don't think we have. Oh, yeah. It's almost uh, seven o'clock. Some of us haven't even said a word. I was yeah. going to say, why don't we? But, you know, be aware of. Before you leave. Uh, there's a better way to word this, I'm sure. Um, yeah, let's think about it and come back. Yeah. Um, evaluate. Or stay apprised. Stay of, current or stay yeah, up to Stay apprised or, of. Be apprised. Of, of state yeah. actions with casinos. Right. Because yeah. until the state decides what they want to do locally, they want to take all the money, is the issue. Wow. Well, that's not going to happen. As usual, we're going to be waiting on the state to figure out what they want to do. <laughs> May I make a suggestion that? that we have a follow-up meeting? I now will that we've got these and then, then vote, I, I then we have a chance, chance to digest and really think it's Well, let's real quick see if we can just wrap this up even at the, at the risk of being five minutes late. I think my suspicion is I don't think any of these are outlandish that we can't all just reasonably agree to. But we have okay. a number that... By numbers, almost manageable. Yeah. Like yeah. How much winnowing down you need so to do. I like your last know. thing was casino, correct? That's it. Yep. Kate, did you have something? Yeah, I just, well, obviously, my biggest thing is going to be the communications, the PR piece for oh, me, yeah. um, and working with uh, staff and um, Jess with uh, some of those pieces and trying to help us become more transparent. Um, like working closer with the community, um, keeping them informed, doing a better job at keeping them informed, um, and being able to reach our whole demographic of constituents. So that is four or five different pieces yeah. of ways to do that. So yep. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Then, um, uh, and then the other thing that I'm really um, looking at is you know the, ord the ordinances. I've got um, three years. I really want to get through those ordinances and get some of those things up to date. Um, I think some, some things are really outdated and uh, they need to be gone over. Is that a goal for the council? Um, I, would, I would definitely need some help. So I don't know if that's what people have a workshop around it. 
I mean, it's not something that I can take on by myself. <laughs> That's for sure. So, uh, just update the ordinances? Yeah. Please. I mean, I don't. People don't have to go for it. I don't care. Whatever. It's just. <laughs> I think it's. Just, I think it's important for our town, and I think it's also. It, it will help us, in some areas, become more business friendly. We have some things that I think are outdated. I've been going over just some of those things, and then um, uh, everything else I had. I think pretty much you guys have <laughs> pretty much covered. So I'm good. Any other? Different independent thoughts that aren't showing up there somehow? Yeah. Uh, I met with the Energy Committee, of, I'm on met with them today uh, and brought up the whole thing. Jess encouraged me to say, tell us what, if you've got ideas, get them out there because tonight is uh, this the night to, to, for us to express it. And we really identified three things that uh, they would appreciate if we requested that they investigate. The first is that the PUC is about to issue rules this month yeah. on the municipal ownership of streetlights. Uh -huh. uh, and there's three communities that are all tiered up, teed up to be able to immediately undertake plans to, to, to uh, acquire their own uh, streetlights and put LEDs in. And it's, wow. it's, a, it's, a, it's a big deal. Yeah. Uh, it has a capital cost component. Obviously, it has a big cost savings component. So they would like to be able to uh, study that and report to us on that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they were very interested in uh, the hockey rink. Uh, and they would like to be able to, if we're going to do, they would like to have any major structure on this uh, municipal campus or that the town becomes involved in, in which the Energy Committee acts as a close advisor on energy issues. Uh, and so, uh, so uh, they think the hockey rink is, uh, and I had already introduced the hockey people to them, uh, yeah. to Rick Meinking, uh, uh, Meinking. So oh, at, at uh, efficiency, oh, efficiency yeah. Main, yeah. he's our chair. Uh, oh. So so they're already starting to work. So the, so the, that one they would like to be able to get their nose right in the middle of it. Cool. Uh, and the third one was uh, Rick uh, said uh, we've used uh, TIFs, tax incentive uh, contracts with developers for senior housing. He said, how about if we, he has heard that it has been used successfully for uh, higher efficiency buildings mm. so that you either get bonuses or in mm. terms of density and things like that or tax, a tax break, but it, it starts to get the, the new structures in town built at a higher efficient energy efficiency right. level. Right. And, he, and their attitude is we are uh, a, a town that is recognized in uh, in Maine as having some leadership qualities. You know, we, we the solar uh, panels. By the, I won't steal Tom's thunder. He will report it later. We we signed the contract for the cogen uh, yesterday. Oh, awesome. That will be up and running by June. That's great. Uh, so I mean, there's and those are two things that the energy committee yeah. pushed through. So. Uh, so those three things were things they requested the opportunity to study, but they didn't want to do it unless the town council thought they were worth doing. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. So under under energy related to conservation, evaluate purchase of streetlights. Conservation, conservation is a design priority and incentives for conservation. Peter, anything? I get mine up. Okay. Um, so I'm going to really quick give you the couple that I had, and big surprise, it's going to be historic preservation. So um, just real quick, if you just want to put up the head title, that's fine, and then I'll chit chat real quick while you're writing, Tom. Identify, uh, this is, we, we had this as a goal last year, it's coming to fruition now, so uh, it's a carryover from last year, so I just kind of want to put it up there again for historic preservation, identify what is within the community and, and make a list. Um, support an incentive-based historic preservation program mm -hmm. and make town resources available, which just means staff and, and, and we do have some funding that's already mechanisms in place. So, um, And then just promote community pride and awareness with signage designations and, and, and putting together a tour program. Um, and then, of course, affordable housing, which is um, 
be goal is to increase workforce housing. Um, that, that's a critical area. Um, continue exploring town and private partnerships. And again, just town resources, which would be staff, you know, continuing to make themselves available with outreach and, and, and um, kind of facilitating. And then um, the last thing for affordable housing would be identify what is working, what is not, and implement new strategies to obtain that workforce and affordable housing. Um, so, is there anything that we missed that anybody wanted to add real quick to council goals? Did we, did we get down, uh, uh, yeah, we got master plan. Okay. Yeah, that we was, did. Uh, in long range building plan, uh, I believe we got two, correct? I'm yeah. not mistaken. I, that was I, Dan Bacon's was more out there. Yeah, yeah. I, but it was still good. It was still good, and if anything, I guess, it's it's a planner. Uh, yeah, it's sort of more, my suggestion would be that we encourage him to tell us what we can do to assist in that. Cause I we, agree. Because we do not know. I agree. Yeah. Yes, guys, there, there were a number of corollaries from that. Yeah. We need to get in the next room. So Tom will probably type these all up. Um, the <laughs> last. <laughs> <laughs> He's right on, sorry, you're right under the bus, Tom. Um, is there any interest in meeting again to prioritize these, or do we think that we could maybe just say that these are all relatively... I don't think we need to prioritize I mean, them. I, I, think are, I, I, think I would be interested in seeing how people would prioritize them. I mean, I, I would suggest doing a survey. It's just write a survey. Well, I get the point you know, of and, like I, and I'll say this is how I would... Yeah, I mean, is there anything on here that you feel shouldn't be a council goal? No. no. So if there's nothing on here that shouldn't be a council goal, then... I have an issue with one, but I'm fine with it staying on it. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, that, that was what <laughs> I was asking. So we do. Yeah, we'll be there we'll as, we'll as, there as soon as we're finished. We'll be there as soon as we're finished. What time will we be as we'll be as when the soon council as we're done. Right. I'm wrapping up right now. So be along well, I would simply observe for our, your expectation, you know, there's, yeah. a, there's a theory that so I don't have to be nice. Do a few things and do them extremely well. We've got an ambitious schedule here. Yeah. And, yeah. And, uh, so the final consensus is I just we'll need to probably meet again. Yeah. So we'll, we'll work on that date. And okay. Oh, I'd like to. I think, son, I'd like to hear what you. At some point, I'd like to hear what you have to say about it. Cause I'm sort of a. I know it's a lot of work. Kind of my thing. Well, that is actually the outcome. Jeff. Jeff. I think what I hear you say is not unmarried.